I hope that the quality of two previous films were good enough to hear, to watch and to understand what I said. And in this third part, as usually, I will try to apply some ideas, uh, principles, uh, which we saw in uh, the time of uh, Spinoza and the way how particular religious and uh, political authorities behave towards his uh, ideas and how he sell, uh, he himself um, was uh, acting, acting uh, to the reaction of his uh, family, of his uh, religious communities and his friends, um, what it means for us, which message is behind and apply uh, this philosophy which we discovered behind him to our modern time and particularly to this vivid, uh, extremely emotionally engaging debate, political debate like uh, presidential elections, like uh, some uh, decisions of constitutional court or high, highest court, uh, which we are seeing around us and we have our own opinions on it and uh, we're wondering we are wondering how how come that people have so uh, different opinions and are defending them uh, without uh, bothering to explain reasons uh, why they are following certain ideas. Uh, for example, the decision of the uh, Constitutional Court, uh, which is uh, so controversial, and uh, I think uh, philosophically speaking, uh, the beginning instead of uh, having so clearly cut ideas, uh, perhaps it will be better to, to stop uh, for the moment and to reflect upon why, uh, for example, Catholic Church thinks in this way, why other um, denominations, uh, Christian denominations, think differently why uh, Judaism or Islam or other religions have their own and different opinions from, from Catholicism and radical fundamentalistic um, Protestant group. So instead of, of joining uh, one group and then to fight against one another, perhaps it would be better to reflect upon what is behind. And I think in this sense, uh, Spinoza is 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 a, is a model figure of someone who is uh, uh, patiently looking around and someone who is trying to follow his own idea, development of his ideas, and also he tried to understand others, and his job is critical. But uh, he is not um, uh, quick in joining a groups of people, but he prefer to de to elucidate, to develop his own ideas in constant dialogue with others. And uh, uh, there are some, uh, basic ideas which are considered as, as ideas and uh, one of them is uh, that God exists and is abstract and impersonal. And I think this is, uh, is something which Christian or for Jews is very offensive because they consider personal, as concrete, and as someone who is almost a, a person to whom you can speak uh, on the basis of daily life. But if we uh, take time and if we reflect, probably we will discover that uh, this personal image of God is not so obvious. Uh, when we try to, to talk to him or to her, we don't know the gender of divinity. Is, is is a hard uh, hard job. So perhaps uh, is something in, uh, in 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 Spinoza's uh, ideas. 
he also uh, said uh, that God could be identified by nature. Deus sive are very similar or even identical. So what it means, and we have already category for this, that, that Spinoza's uh, system, because it was a kind of system, was pantheistic. It means that creation cosmos is divine. And before we reject it as heretic, before we deny the right to think in this way, let us enter in his thought, his writings, and follow his thought, how he read Hebrew Bible. And remember that he was an expert. He knew very well Hebrew. He studied uh, uh, Jewish tradition very well. And he discovered that behind is the human uh, creativity, human activities, which we have to, to judge with our mind. For example, generally accepted that Pentateuch, the first books of uh, Hebrew Bible, so-called Torah, was written by, by Moses. And he theological, historical arguments that it was not true. It is impossible that someone describe own or her own death. It's a good argument, right? So some, somebody else and probably many authors wrote this. But it, it, Spinoza uh, wrote all this um, uh, books or chapters of, of uh, uh, this treatise, uh, theological political treatise, not in order to, off to, to, to be offensive or, or, or to ridiculize the religious convictions, but to give arguments that's discuss about, right? And the same about uh, the presence of religion in public life, how modern it is. Why to give to one group more privileges than, than other group? And after, if you have too many privileges, if you feel that you're dominant, of course you will translate your religious ideas into politics and you will get from politicians to, to help you, to defend you, to reject others, etc. So, my uh, about Spinoza. My uh, reading uh, of his uh, works is that we need this kind of uh, rational analysis of politics, of our politicians, of our politi polit political ideas and, and uh, religious ideas. They are not given one for ever but they are human creations. In this sense, I think uh, Spinoza is inviting us to constant criticism, constant questioning of what we see from our parents, from our grandparents, from other philosophers. So this autonomy in thinking is something which is extremely liberating. You, you, you suddenly you feel that uh, your life, your destiny is your, in, in your hands, that you can discuss every aspect of, uh, of your life. And I think uh, now uh, your generation, so-called Generation Z, uh, right, that you, you are deeply immersed in social media and all world online uh, shape your, uh, and yours uh, imagination. And we have to include this new uh, idea in our uh, philosophical reflection. We will see uh, this uh, next, uh, next time and try to see a relationship between philosophy and media. media 
influenced our perception of reality. But nevertheless, what the message for today and what Spinoza, Baruch Spinoza, is teaching us is to use your mind to be free in your thinking and to expect from political authority to be uh, tolerant, to be equal uh, towards plurality of worldviews. So in this sense, he, he is a very, very modern. And how to connect this uh, again with the, with the uh, present uh, elections in the United States uh, and this uh, very uh, dynamic uh, presidential elections and then two leaders uh, of two parties which are so polarized and which are so, um, I would say, uh, violently attacking one another. And I think this is the, 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 in a good example, the, the culture, uh, civilization, based on uh, respect of human autonomy, of human diversity, became um, a caricature of itself. It's, it's, it's a very critical moment in American life. And I think that Americans need to discover um, Spinoza, need to discover a lot of commentaries, which were written by American scholars, uh, in order to get read from uh, this and extremely, um, I would say, uh, limiting uh, of politics as such. So in a sense, we vitally need to do uh, analysis of what is going on around us. Uh, it will be possible, I, I don't know. Uh, we, we can try, but we can and we should use this categories of uh, cold, I would say, cold analysis in order to understand the world in which we are living, right? So what we saw in, in Martha Snusbaum analysis of fear, of monarchy on fear, of this uh, sense of being uh, marginalized, of being humiliated, in, in, in uh, her book, which we analyzed last time, um, Strangers in the, Their Own Land. All these are um, similar uh, perspectives that we need to take our emotional uh, life uh, seriously. But uh, first of all, we have to apply our rational skills to better understand the world in which we are living. And I hope that we will have a vivid uh, conversation about uh, relationship between philosophy and religion. Thank you very much for attention.